Tell me, Grayson, do you think association football will improve with the introduction of the new professional player? No, Mr. Chumley Warner. <laughs> Today's amateurs will never be bettered. You can't expect a professional, paid to do nothing but play football all day, to achieve the same level of physical fitness as a man who works in a chip shop all week and only plays football on Saturdays. I must say, with all due deference, Grayson, I disagree with you. If you don't mind, Mr. Chumley Warner, you're quite wrong. <laughs> well, let's see if the short film can settle the matter. It's Full House at Wembley for one of the top matches of the 1933 season. One of the leading teams of today, Arsenal, formerly the Village Arsenal, against the Liverpool team of 1991. We're playing for the first time in black and white. And they may also be surprised by the pace of the black and white game. <laughs> Liverpool may be professionals trained to the peak of physical fitness, but Arsenal aren't daunted. There's Nat, mind your legs please, Nuthouse warming up. <laughs> There's the captain, Charles, Charlie Charles, one of the famous Charles brothers. There's the right wing demon, Wilf, adapted for speed finning. Showing us his splendid skills. And in go in the reliable hands of stand between the posts hardly. Charles, Charlie Charles, shaking hands with the referee, Mr. Hollingsworth from Cheltenham, and our touching. He's knitted him a lovely scarf. And some of the other Arsenal players are passing around some shag and some nice looking sandwiches. Liverpool have taken account of the whistle, and they're off, and it's a go. <laughs> Sorry, our camera didn't quite catch it, but can't turn around that quickly. Stan Hartley didn't even have time to put his cigarette out. <laughs> and the Liverpool team celebrate. They seem to be kissing. That's not very sure about that. <laughs> so, Arsenal kick off. Their tactics, obviously, very, very different. Always keen eye for the ball. Charles, Charlie, Charles, even spots when he's missed it. He shoots for goal. And it's a throw into Liverpool. The Liverpool player throws, clean over their heads. And into the goal. Two. Three. Four. The only glimmer of hope for the Gunners is when they get the ball out of Finney on the wing. What's he going to do with it? Well, exactly what he was doing earlier. So, 10-0 at half-time, Liverpool go back to the dressing room, but for Arsenal, it's some light refreshments. And for the crowd, top-class half-time entertainment with the man they call Mr Banjo, Mr George Banjo. <laughs> found that most pleasant. So the second half and Arsenal must have taken a stern talking to because they've come out with a markedly different approach to the game. <laughs> There's Matt Nassau's lifting up. The whistle blows. And shot for goal. And is the ref going to allow that? Yes, it's just over the line. And Liverpool have suddenly taught Dad Nuthouse how to celebrate. Nuthouse's goal inspires the rest of the team. Goal! Some of the Liverpool players are trifle unhappy about that, and the referee's taking out his little black book. It's the Shorter Oxford Dictionary. He wants to look up what some of those words mean. And he's found one, and he's bringing on his mother to disprove it. <laughs> Ten all and a minute to go. Charles, Charlie, Charles waiting on the wing. <laughs> it's almost as if the ball was glued to his feet. Heads up the ball. And it's all over. And a sporting finish to a sporting contest.